Hey guys, I'm going to try to answer a few questions. Um, my videos, um, I'm getting a lot of questions that there's no way that I can answer some of these questions in the format of uh, YouTube replies. It's just too much. So, I'm going to try to make a video reply and answer some of these questions. I know that uh, some of you guys out there, beginners, <clears throat> you're just getting into this stuff and you would, uh, you want as accurate information as you can get. Now, I know there's a lot of information on the internet and some of it's dangerous. That's just downright dangerous. And I would, I would hate for someone to get hurt following the advice that I give. So I have to stress that you be as safe as you can be. And if I give advice, please try to follow the advice I give <clears throat> as well as you can because. I try to do things safely, and if you follow the advice that I give, you should, everything should work fine. Um, some of the things I want to go over is types of material. Um, you know, there's words that are used in some of the circles that, um, that I'm involved in that uh, a lot of people don't recognize. Now I don't have a lot of uh, visuals that I can help with. I've got a couple of uh, circuit boards that I'm going to show and explain some of the components and, and the way some of it's made. Um, but in my videos and, and in some of the replies you may hear things like AR. AR is aqua regia and textbook it gives the formula as 3 to 1 hydrochloric acid and nitric acid um, I speak about poor man's AR um, this formula is a workaround method to aqua regia and it's um, hydrochloric acid and sodium nitrate um, the ratios are basically the same. Um, I'm sorry, I'm not more prepared, but uh, uh, the solids, as far as the nitrates go, um, I go uh, with one teaspoon of solid nitrate for one mil of liquid nitric acid and I don't follow the textbook uh, recipe uh, rather than pre-make the, uh, uh, the solution I use it as I go uh, and that way you don't have excess nitric acid um, a lot of procedures you have to neutralize acid before you can precipitate your gold. If you follow the processes that I described, you won't have free nitric acid that will uh, basically stop the process. Uh, it, it, it's just not there because you don't put it there. Um, I add my nitrate in increments, slowly you add, you wait for the reaction to finish, then you add some more. Visually observe um, when you notice that the metal is almost depleted, slow down, don't add as much. Add just enough to dissolve the metal. Um, that way when you precipitate uh, your sodium metabisulfite or SMB 
doesn't have to fight this excess nitric acid to precipitate the gold. The drop is much quicker. It's a lot cleaner. Um, two, um, sodium metabisulfite is selected. It will precipitate only gold, theoretically. If you have a saturated solution of aqua regia, and it's saturated with a lot of different types of metals, some metal will precipitate out when you add the sulfate, or rather when you add the metabisulfite, it'll precipitate as a sulfate. So you can precipitate copper if the solution is very heavily saturated. You can get copper sulfate to precipitate out. It doesn't precipitate uh, in the same chemical reaction as the gold does. Um, it's the sulfur dioxide gas causes the copper to sulfate and it comes out of solution. Kind of simple. But it poses a problem sometimes. Um, the only problem though um, is that people don't know how to deal with it. Most sulfates are soluble in water. So if you get a, a if you're precipitating your gold and you get a heavy drop of white fluffy uh, stuff that you don't know what it is. Um, don't worry about it. I mean, I know it's kind of scary to see all this white stuff floating around your solution. You're expecting to see gold. Uh, just, uh, just go ahead, precipitate like you would, and then uh, put all your solids in a container and give it a good hard boil in water. Um, sulfates are soluble in water and that should take out a, a lot a lot of the contamination okay um well let's get down to some materials and i'll explain to you how some of this stuff is put together okay memory cards uh these things are um plentiful people like them you can see the gold, You've got gold fingers, um, You've got these gold pads for the solder joints. Uh, the big secret about these is the gold that's visible that you can see on these pads and these fingers is about one third of the gold on this whole stick. Two thirds of the gold on this thing is locked in these chips. These are IC chips. They have two rows of legs, which makes them a dip chip. Dip is dual inline. So you have dual inline pins here for this chip. Um, each one of these legs have traces inside the plastic that travel up and there's a real small microchip right in the middle and wherever these legs terminate they all terminate in a square around this chip there's a very tiny solid gold 24 karat gold bonding wire that goes from the leg to the chip so you can count the legs you can actually count these with a good magnifying glass or whatever and ever how many legs there are how many gold bonding wires there are per chip. Now those gold bonding wires adds up. Um, like I said, two thirds of the gold in this whole stick is in those bonding wires. The chip itself has no precious metal content. Uh, it's just those bonding wires that has the gold content. Now, the base that that chip sits on can be one of two metals. It can be silver, 
or it can be palladium. But both metals were used for the base for the chip to sit on. Um, it's the uh, it's what I would consider to be the ground on it. It's the grounding pad. The chip sits on this pad and the bonding wires connects to the chip. Um, if you process these bonding wires using aqua regia, the silver will go into the solution as well as the palladium. These metals need to be dealt with. Um, I don't consider either one of these precious metals to be part of the process because to me it's just a nuisance. Both metals can be reclaimed. Um, it's not trash. There's no need to throw it away. Uh, it can be reclaimed. It can be recycled. It can be refined and sold for the metal that it is. That will be a little later on though because right now we're just dealing with the gold. The gold plating that's on this board, the actual gold itself is 24 karat gold. The uh, plating process is a chemical one. Uh, gold plates out of solution and as it plates out, it plates out pure. Um, you know, people tend to believe that plated gold is a carat gold. Totally not true. It's impossible that gold plates out as carat gold. Um, anyone with any chemistry background will know this. Uh, you can ask anyone that, that does plating can tell you that gold plates out pure. What makes it impure is people removing this and then they melt it down and they think that it's gold all the way to the board but it's not. A printed circuit board such as this starts out well as a fiberglass board. The traces are um, screen printed on the board just like they screen print a t-shirt. Uh, but the, uh, the the printing that they use is copper. The first layer of metal on this board is copper. So they they screen print this copper on here. Then they use um, electromagnetic fields to set the copper paste, and it's kind of like a microwave. And uh, <coughs> It's very precise. That's how you can get these very tiny little lines on there. <clears throat> they screen print it, then they microwave it, and then it's a bare board with copper traces. Then they plate a nickel barrier over the copper. Very important. A lot of people don't know this. They put a nickel barrier over the copper and then they plate gold over the nickel. So these fingers, all the metal that you see here, all the gold that you see is three layers of metal. It's a copper layer, then there's a nickel layer, then there's a gold layer. So people feel the edge of that gold finger and they think that's very thick. Well there's three layers of metal there. That's why it takes a lot of this kind of stuff to add up. Um, the nickel is a barrier. Um, I'm not a chemist. Um, I don't have a formal education in this stuff. This is what I've learned 20 years of doing this stuff and studying on it um, in my own time. Gold and copper will migrate to one another. So if you were to take pure copper, 
pure gold and mash it together compress it together you give it enough time and eventually the gold and the copper will absorb one another you won't have gold and you'll have copper side by side you'll have an alloy of both gold and copper loves each other gold is a transitional metal it will absorb almost every other type of metal 